I wrapped this in the wrong wrapping. Oh no. This is definitely proving to be a little bit more of a struggle than I thought, but that's okay. We have got this. I feel like I'm going super slow with all of this. Like it's taking me forever to wrap because I keep talking forever. And then I like can't answer anything really short. It's like I have to give you guys like a whole backstory, so I'm sorry. Back in the middle. guys welcome back today i'm going to be sharing a bit different of a video than i normally share on my channel but a lot of you guys have messaged me saying that you want like some type of wrapping video where i wrap presents with you guys but i thought it would be a lot of fun to kind of take this opportunity to do a little quick q a and also just kind of like get to know each other a bit better in this so that's what we're gonna do today and then i'm also i'm not going to be sharing what i got my kids for christmas because they watch my videos and it's just not worth spoiling anything spoiling anything for them but i will be sharing over on my instagram stories and i'll save it to a highlight and i'll probably also share over on my main channel stories i don't think i have stories on this channel which is why i wouldn't do that here but that way you guys can still see like what i got our kids but without spoiling anything so i have asked over on instagram and then also on my main channel community tab some different questions or topics that you guys wanted me to answer or cover and so i have a list of them right here i'm just going to go through them in no order at all so it'll probably be a little bit jumbled but whether you have laundry to do or you're behind like me and have some wrapping to do or you just want to sit down and hang out for a bit grab something to drink and we can just have some time together so have like near enough room so I think I'm going to have to probably shift I have to scoot you guys back a little bit so I can have some more room up here so the first question is what does Kyle do for work Kyle used to be in the Air Force he was in the Air Force for five no for six years I want to say it was 2015 he got out and he got a job with the FAA and that is where he continues to work so he is an air traffic controller for the FAA here in Utah. How do you manage to have a clutter-free home? This is a big problem for me. Okay, I will say I used to be a lot more clutter-free, honestly, before YouTube. A lot of people I don't think realize this, but YouTube is 100% like a full-time job. I work, there are a lot, of work, a lot of weeks that I work longer hours than Kyle does because there's so, so much to it and there's so much like behind the scenes. Because of that and because I'm trying to like work full time at home while still being a full time stay at home mom, it's just really hard. And so because of that, I feel like I have not been able to handle like doing my regular declutters as much as I would like to. So I'm actually doing a big like decluttering series in January on my main channel. So if you guys need to declutter your homes, then come with me because I'm going to be decluttering like my entire house. I used to feel like we had such a decluttered house and now I feel like everywhere I look, it's like there's stuff because I just don't feel like I have the time to go through it. And when I do go through things, I usually like to share it with you guys and so it takes longer or it's like I'll declutter one room but then I have to like edit the video and just all that stuff and so it takes longer so I can't like declutter everything as quickly. I'm basically just saying like I don't feel like we actually have a decluttered house right now or not near as much as I would have liked but what I would say for that is doing little declutters regularly and then do like a big one in each room like once maybe twice a year if you have time. But doing little declutters, like I always have a declutter bin in our house and it kind of moves around lately. But then it's like if I find I'm never using this certain mug or I'm never using these pair of shoes or this jacket or something, I can just toss it in the bin. And then whenever it gets full, we just go donate it. Or like if one of my sisters come or something, I'm like, hey, if you want anything from here, you can go ahead and grab it. But that way it's just, it's easy to kind of like stay on top of it that way without having to do like a full on declutter. My next question is, where did you grow up? Both Kyle and I grew up in Montana. He grew up half of his time in a town called Butte and I grew up half, and I grew up like the entire time pretty much 
in a town called Missoula. So that's where we grew up. Next question is how did Kyle and I meet? And Kyle and I actually met when we were both working our high school jobs at Taco Bell. Do we want any more kids? We do not want any more kids. So I have four sisters and one brother. Kyle has just him and his sister. I always wanted a big family and I always loved even numbers. So I always thought I want six kids. And then we had Luke and I was like, four is probably good. <laughs> Realizing like just how tough motherhood can be, but at the same time, like super rewarding, but it is a tough job. I decided four kids was good and that's what we kind of thought we were gonna end up having. Every time we had a baby, we just both, Kyle and I, felt like there's someone else that's like part of our family that's not here yet. And so we had Luke and we felt like, you know, this is so good, but there's more kids that have not joined our family yet. We had Liam and we felt the same way. And then when I was pregnant with Noah, I kept having this feeling like, just in case this is your last pregnancy, just make sure to enjoy it. Like, don't just like get wrapped up in like, you know, the struggles of pregnancy. And I thought that was weird just because I kept having that feeling. And then it ended up being like, once we had Noah, we both, Kyle and I just felt like, we're all here, like we're not missing anybody. And we both had that feeling like overwhelming. And so that's when we were like, our family's complete. And ever since then, we've just, we just have felt like that. So we are not having any more kids. And a few people had asked where we live and we do live in Utah. And this is our forever home, or at least like that's what we're planning for. Okay, so the next question is, how did you get inspired to be a YouTuber? So I started YouTube totally as a hobby, I never, had any idea like where it would lead to or anything. I started because after having Noah, I was in a very bad state of like postpartum depression and it lasted for months and months and it was just extremely difficult. I ended up kind of starting to pull out of it. I somehow came across Love Meg and I started watching her videos and they just started pulling me out of like the funk that I was in where I was not keeping a clean house. I was just basically like feeling paralyzed, like not able to do what I needed to do. And they just helped me a lot and they inspired me to start getting back into the person I was before, basically. The postpartum kind of like took over. And so that was really what inspired me to want to start my channel. I never started my channel to be like a YouTuber, it was just, to have a hobby, to do something, to give myself something to focus on. And then it quickly just turned into so much more and I really had no idea like the community that would come from this and like talking to you guys in the comments and like messages and emails and things like that. It's just been incredible. And so I've felt, I cannot get this part. So I've just felt so blessed, but it's totally like taken me by surprise. I was definitely not anticipating like any of this. So. That's why I started. Okay, how did you and your husband meet and do y'all still make time for date nights? So I said how we met. We do still make time for date nights, but it has become harder as time go has gone on because our babysitter, we don't really have her come very often anymore, unfortunately. And so we don't have like a regular helper with that it makes it hard because as you guys know we live in Utah our families are in Montana and so we don't have family nearby where we're able to have them help us like by watching the kids or anything and so since we don't really have a babysitter anymore we don't get date nights as much as we would like but we do do at home date nights quite a bit they're not always like super fancy or anything like that a lot of times they're just you know, really casual, like we'll play some video games together, we'll go like watch a movie or something, like once we put the boys down to sleep. And we've gone in the past where sometimes it's easy to get them in and sometimes it's hard. But if you can't do anything else, try to make time for each other, even like just at home. And we've even done like where if we feel like we are just needing some time to connect, like we will have the boys go have a movie night like in our bedroom or something, and then we will just hang out and have like some couple time because I really do feel like it's something that is so easy to get overlooked but I do think it's super important to make your 
relationship priority. I think you just definitely need to put a lot of effort and time into it, just like anything else. Sometimes it doesn't happen as much as we would like, but it definitely, like, we just always make sure that that is still, like, one of our top priorities. How many hours do I put into my social media career? My cleaning videos that I do on my main channel, those take me, on average, like, eight to ten hours probably to edit one video. It takes a long long time same with like instagram and like responding to comments like that always takes a long time like just there's so many different things that you have to do with it or that you want to do with it and so just everything takes long a long time and like even just like cleaning my house i can clean my house from top to bottom i mean not like deep clean it but i can like clean it pretty well in probably like an hour or something but if I'm filming it, it does take me like six hours, but I only have like three hours of footage because like I'm constantly having to like stop and go because I have to help the kids with things or I have to stop and like make meals or something like that. But yeah, it just, it takes a long time. I had zero idea. I feel like because YouTube videos, they look so effortless, like you don't even realize all the things with them. And then you go to do them and you're like, Holy cow, this just takes a really long time. A short answer to that would be, I work at least 40 hours a week, every week. But like when I first started my channel, I was working like 60 hours a week, sometimes more. The next question is, how do you balance home, work, family, self-care, and church commitments? You always seem to. So I would say I don't. That's something I'm gonna try to work on this coming year, but I feel like I try to, but it's just such a hard thing because you're just pulled in so many different directions all the time. Like you have so many commitments and you have so many things that are on your list. Like you just can't do it all. And that's what I'm realizing recently. Like you just can't do everything. I think with that, just trying to do your best, definitely like prioritizing things and making sure that your priorities are in check. Sometimes self-care has to go to number one. Sometimes your kids have to go to number one. Sometimes your job has to go to number one. Like sometimes church has to go to number one. You just kind of have to like figure things out. But I don't know. I wouldn't say that I perfectly balance anything. <laughs> I'm just trying and failing and trying again. So, but that is just life. Okay, the next question is how long have you been married? Kyle and I just celebrated 10 years in September and we actually went to New York City for our 10 year anniversary and what made us want to live in Utah. I think the biggest reason was there's a good size FAA facility here, which is what he wanted to do. And we're only like seven hours away from home. And so it's kind of like a place that he could do well with his career, but we could also be somewhat close to family. And also we love like that it has seasons here and I feel like it's very family oriented here and we have mountains here. Like there are just a lot of things that we really love about Utah. and. Once we moved here, we just, we fell in love with it even more. Okay, the next question is, if a follower came to town, would you go get some coffee with them and chat with them? I think that would be super fun. Kyle and I were just talking about having like some kind of like meetup or something. And I told him, I was like, it would be <laughs> so funny because I would be like, I feel like I would say, okay, yeah, I'm having like a meetup on this day at this time. And then nobody would show up and I'd be like, okay, nobody showed up. If people would show up, I think it would be a lot of fun to just like get together and like get to know each other and visit and so yeah, I totally would. If you guys live somewhat close and you guys are interested in doing like just like a super casual meetup or something, let me know. You've mentioned living in different states in the past videos. Did you have a favorite? So we started out in Montana, then we lived in Mississippi, North Carolina, Georgia, South Dakota and now Utah. So we do have a favorite. Our favorite was South Dakota. Aside from Utah, we love Utah the most, but South Dakota was actually our favorite. We lived in Sioux Falls and it was just, I feel like it was like the perfect size. It was big enough that they had a lot of good things to do, like a lot of shopping, a lot of like events. They just had a lot of things, but it wasn't so big that it was obnoxious like a huge city 
and so we really liked that. We felt like it was also very family oriented. They had a lot of little like things to take your kids to. It seemed very safe. It was just a really, really good place to live. But the things that we didn't like about South Dakota was one, it was so incredibly cold in the winters. Like when we moved from South Dakota to Utah, it was like the beginning of February, end of January. And Kyle and I were out there like packing up the trailer. I want to say it was like 30 degrees below. Plus wind chill. And now that we haven't lived there in a while, I'm like, was it really that cold? Like, that doesn't really seem possible. But no, it really is. And we have friends that still live there. And it's just so cold. Like you walk outside and your teeth hurt. Like everything just like is frozen on you. I don't know. It's crazy. So... That was the thing that we did not like about South Dakota. And then also just that it was really far away from family. And also I miss Aldi there. I really wish that Utah would have an Aldi, but they don't have Aldi here, so that makes me sad. Have I always enjoyed cleaning? Yes, I pretty much always have. I've always like, I think probably a lot of it comes with my, my perfectionist like personality, I guess. I just, I don't know. I've always enjoyed like cleaning and organizing and things like that. So I think I mostly always have. Did you go to college? What did you study and did you have a career before becoming a stay-at-home mom? I did not go to college and I didn't have a career before being a stay-at-home mom. So no, I did not go to college and I did not have a career before becoming a stay-at-home mom. I, Kyle and I got married and I was only 19, which at the time everyone was like, oh, you guys are so young. But we had been together like, I think like two and a half years. And so like we had been together for a long time and i don't know it just didn't seem like we were so young but now that i look back i'm like we were super young and neither of us really regret getting married young i think as long as you're mature enough and i think as long as you're not just like rushing into it just to rush into it i don't think it's a bad thing to get married young but it was we were definitely young and so with that i had graduated the year before and then i just worked as a waitress um for like the year leading up to us getting married. And then we got married and then I think it was like a week after we got married, he left for the Air Force and that's it. And then we ended up getting pregnant like six months after getting married. I wanted to always be a stay at home mom and he loved the idea of me being a stay at home mom. Like if I wanted to work, he would have been fine with that too. But since I was like happy to be a stay at home mom, that's what he would that's what he wanted anyway too. And because we started out so young, like I think I just barely had turned 21 when I had Luke. And so, yeah, I was never, never a career woman, never in college or anything. Do your kids ever throw tantrums at the store in any public places? And if so, any advice? Yes, it's not all the time, but it definitely has happened and I'm sure it will happen many, many more times. <laughs> um, I feel like pretty much every kid has ever like has done this. I feel like I'm not even rapping anymore. <laughs> and like, I'm not done. I'm just, I'm just getting sidetracked. My biggest suggestion with that when your kids are having a fit in public, when I was a younger mom or like a newer mom, it used to just like, like I would go red in the face, like be so embarrassed, I think. Like, oh my gosh, what are all these people thinking? Like they must think I'm a terrible mom. Like I can't even like keep my kids from having a tantrum or something. Basically what I have learned and realized over the years if people are judging you like they either Don't have kids and like don't get it yet because I have been there. I used to think before I had my kids I used to think my kids are never Ever gonna have fits like that and my kids are always gonna eat perfectly or like just all that stuff like before you realize like they're They're just little tiny humans you cannot control everything that they do. So either the people that are judge are going to judge you are people who just aren't there in their life yet and just don't understand it. Or if they do and they're still judging you, like it doesn't matter because it's just something that happens. Like life is not perfect. And if they're gonna judge you on like you not having everything together and your kids being kids and I feel like I'm not, not saying this well. Basically just try to stay focused on the situation and your kids in the moment. Just like focus like how you would deal with it at home and don't let like the stress of feeling like you're gonna be judged about it or something 
like influence how you act because I feel like sometimes it's like it's so easy to just give in to whatever they're having a tantrum about because then all of a sudden they're gonna stop crying and then it's like well then now you're not gonna be embarrassed but I think that's like so much worse because that will definitely teach them in the future to continue to do that and so just some honest moments right here while it's not ideal like every single parent will have that happen so just just know that you're not alone. Next question is, what was your birth experience with all three kids? I don't know if a lot of you guys know this. I think I've mentioned it before, but not for a really long time. So with Luke and Liam, I actually had home birth, water births with them. We loved it so much. With Noah, I actually couldn't find a certified nurse midwife, which basically means they're a midwife, but they also have medical um, training. So like if anything does go wrong, they're still like equipped to handle it. So with Noah, I actually had him in the hospital, but I labored in the water, like in a tub, and then I ended up not having him in the water. But my favorite was always in the water and at home. Those are my favorite. What motivates you to clean almost every day? I think thinking about the end result is what motivates me to clean. Sometimes if I'm really stressed out, just cleaning will kind of like de-stress me. It's not something you really have to focus on a lot. Like you can just kind of zone out and clean. Like a lot of times like I'll zone out and just do the dishes or I'll zone out and just, you know, like just kind of tidy. And so that's something that I, I do like if I'm just like stressing out or something I can just go start cleaning and I know that I usually feel better afterwards but on the on like a daily basis it's usually that everything will feel and just like having that peaceful home I think that's what mostly motivates me to clean most days I'm just dropping everything I'm just like a mess over here how do you live slash deal with your health problem how do you stay positive I have rheumatoid arthritis and I'm 27 I have four girls and a nine-month-old son so you are super busy and rheumatoid arthritis actually runs in my family so I'm pretty familiar with it and it can be pretty tough so it's hard. I actually had something called Sjogren's syndrome when I was like 15. I had nerve damage in my legs like I just had like so many different things going on and so I've actually had a fear that something like that would come back. I feel would be like just kind of like crippling like I don't know how I would do it. So that sounds super tough having rheumatoid arthritis with five kiddos and with them being younger. As far as like how I deal with it, honestly, some days I deal with it good and some days I deal with it bad. Some days I'm not feeling well and I'm feeling very down depressed and there are times where I'll call my mom crying and I just don't feel like I can do anything. I will have like anxiety attacks. Like there are just a lot of things that you guys don't always see. I do share a lot of stuff over on Instagram, I try to be kind of like more transparent over there. Not that I'm not over here, but it's just easier to be like that over there in the moment, I guess. And so I'd like to try to share that kind of thing with you guys and just be transparent and be vulnerable and share those like not so happy moments sometimes just because it is nice to know you're not alone. But I would give yourself a lot of credit if you were dealing with something like that because life is tough as it is. And when you start adding in health problems, relationship problems, problems with your kids, or just like anything, just when you start adding life to life, it's just things get tricky and things get hard. So be kind to yourself and just give yourself grace knowing that life is tough for you and for everybody and everyone has their own issues whether you're seeing them or not. Are your boys excited about moving to the basement? So this has actually been something that has been like surprising to me because I've just gotten a lot of questions about this. Do the boys want to be moved to the basement or like why are we making the boys move to the basement? And we are not making them move to the basement but we've given them the choice. And also like the way we um, designed it and the way the windows are down there, it really doesn't feel like a basement. It's like very open, it's very bright and yeah, so I don't think it's like like a scary basement or anything like that. You've asked them if they want to stay in their room upstairs, if one of them wants to go down, like what they want to do. And all three of them want to go to the basement. I think pretty much Luke wants to go to the basement and so Liam wants to go to the basement. 
and because Liam and Luke want to go to the basement, Noah wants to go to the basement. Noah is so funny. He will actually go down to his new soon to be bedroom and just like hang out in there and be like, I'm just in my room. Like it's just so funny and so cute. But yeah, they are all so, so excited. But I will say I've shared this in the past and every single night, pretty much without fail, they all sleep in the same twin bed. There's one twin bed that they are all crammed into, all three of them. And then there's two twin beds in their bedroom that like nobody sleeps in. And sometimes they kind of like go back and forth and like which bed they choose, but it's so funny because in my mind, I'm like, I would definitely like just take my own bed <laughs> and not share it with everybody. They just love being together. And I think, especially at night they love being together like they love like having like a sleeping buddy and so i'm totally anticipating them having their own room because that's like what they want but then i think when it comes to when they go to bed i'm expecting them to all want to sleep in somebody's bed together so we'll see how it goes but that's kind of like what i'm predicting how much time do i spend working on youtube every day it just depends on the day like some days I will take most of the day off from work and then some days I will it feels like I do nothing but work and like there have been so many nights where I've stayed up until 5 a.m. doing a video and then I'll wake up at like 7 30 to get the kids ready for school and get going with my day and stuff and so like it was even just a few weeks ago I did that I think I stayed up to like 5 a.m. four nights in one week so it just kind of depends well we had a lot of guests over and so like I wasn't working as much during the day and so I would basically work during the night and so it just kind of depends like that I really hate doing that and I don't like to do that and I don't think it's good oh I found my pen and I don't think it's good but it just depends but usually I would say probably like six to eight hours a day like really focused on it but there's always something to do so I feel like I find myself like commenting back or writing emails or things like that like that's not maybe as active work that I find myself doing just kind of here and there like when I get a minute. Okay my next question is how do you keep going when you feel burned out? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I would love to say that I just suck it up and just keep going but there are certain days where I have a list to do and I just feel so overwhelmed with it and I will just not accomplish a lot of things on that list so there are some days where I just have to take like a personal day because I'm just like losing it in my mind and then there are other days where I'm like no I have to get this done and I will just kind of suck it up and do it I can get very overwhelmed if I look at the big picture of things so if I'm able to look at like the smaller tasks I can get it done a lot more like the other day I was so overwhelmed our house was really messy it was just I don't even know like how it happened it just got out of hand and I was feeling so overwhelmed knowing that I had to like get everything cleaned up and instead of just like feeling so overwhelmed with that, I just thought, well, I'm just gonna tidy up the living room. And I started tidying the living room and then I was like, well, I might as well just go ahead and vacuum. And I vacuumed and then I was like, well, now that that's done, like it felt good. And then I moved on to the kitchen. I was like, I'll just clean up the dishes really quick. And I did the dishes and then I did the counters and like you just kind of keep going. You get more, more momentum as you go. So I would say if you're feeling really overwhelmed with something, don't look at the big picture because that can be really overwhelming, but instead just look at little tasks that are more manageable. Okay, the next question is, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? I would love to go to Italy. I'm part Italian and so I would just love to go there. I feel like it's such a gorgeous place and I think that would be like, if I could go anywhere in the world, that would probably be where I would be. I'd like to hear more about your pets, kitties and dog and how they came into your family. So. Kyle's mom actually has border collies and so one of her dogs actually had puppies and that's how we got Emma. That was in 2012 and then with the cats, we actually used to have cats when we lived in Georgia. They were the coolest cats. Like they, we would go on walks every night and they would follow us, like they would follow us on the walks and we would have cars stop like how did you teach your cats to follow you? I'm like I don't know, they just, they've always done that. We got them at the same time. And they weren't siblings, but they just, they were like, they were just like the neatest cats. 
Their names were Samson and Zoe. They were indoor outdoor cats. They would mostly be inside, but they would go outside and just hang out. And I don't know what happened, but one day, like they just didn't come back. And it was really sad. And we drove around and we looked for them and we searched for them and they were both chipped and they had their collars. So I don't know, like we just, we never, no one ever called. We asked our neighbors and we could never find them. And it was so, so sad. Anyway, we didn't get cats for a really long time after that. And then we decided to go ahead and get some more cats. We were actually only planning on getting one cat. When we went to adopt one of them, we found out that they were sisters. And so when we found out they were sisters, we were like, well, we don't really wanna break them up. Like we just want to keep them together. And so that's why we ended up getting both Bailey and um, Micah. But they were sisters and we couldn't bear to break them up. So yeah, that's a little bit about our pets and how they came to be. One question is, how did you prep the older boys for bringing home a new baby? We talked about it and they knew that like a new baby was coming home. Every time we had a new baby, we just basically did like something fun. Um, like one time we just went to a hotel and stayed in a hotel with like a pool and just had like a kind of like a last like family of three or family of four celebration kind of before we had the new baby come in. I was breastfeeding and so I was with the new baby like all the time and so during that time like we would just always make sure that Kyle especially was like like when I would be nursing the new baby he would like you know go play catch with the boys just so that even though like a lot of the attention was now split um, and a lot of like, especially my attention was going to the new baby, like we were still giving the other boys the attention that they would need. I remember one time we did do co-sleeping with all of our boys and that's just what worked out for us. We tried doing the crib with Luke for a long time and then I was getting like no sleep. I told my midwife, I'm like, I feel like I'm a zombie. I'm not getting any rest. And she was like, well, maybe just try co-sleeping. And so we tried co-sleeping and all of a sudden we slept better and I slept better and so that's what we ended up doing but I remember one night um it was after we had Liam and Luke walked in and so it was Kyle and me and Liam in my bed and Luke was sleeping in his bed and he woke up in the middle of the night and he was trying to get in and we were like oh we don't really have room you know for you to come in tonight because Liam was little we didn't want another kid in the bed and it was so sad because Luke said, oh, there's just room for mom and dad and Liam and not me. And like, he wasn't saying it like really sad, but he was just kind of saying it like matter as a matter of fact kind of thing. We were just like, oh, this like, makes us so sad. But like he said that. And so Kyle ended up going and sleeping in the twin bed with him <laughs> that night <laughs> because like we didn't want to make him feel like, oh, there wasn't like there was room for everybody else but him. So I think just making those little sacrifices to make sure that they are still a priority because like we understand that and like we know that but in a little kid's mind it's just easy to not see that and so we've just always made sure to or done our best to make sure that they know like even though there's a new baby here even though like you know some time has changed or like some time is taken from you and given to the baby you're always like still important and priority to us and we love you and all that stuff so that's pretty much what we have done I'm actually going to end this here because I feel like I've been doing this forever. I only have a few more gifts to wrap. I've gotten most things wrapped, but I'm going to go ahead and end this little whatever you call this here. But I hope that you guys have a very Merry Christmas. I will try to continue vlogging, but let me know if you guys have any more questions in the comments and I will do my best to get back to them and just like reply to them in the comments if I didn't get to them. I hope you guys enjoyed this and just kind of like getting to know me a little bit more and our family and our story, but let me know if you guys want to see this again. Like I could do like a laundry chat or something where I sit there and do laundry. I think I could be a little bit better at multitasking while I was doing laundry. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here. And if you are not already subscribed already, make sure that you hit that bell and subscribe down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.